The journey for college football global imperialism continues in Europe. It all started in Antarctica, and I definitely don't want to spoil that one for those who are yet to see it, but it's a banger, what can I say? It sets the stage for global imperialism, so go ahead and give it a watch after this one. We are jumping into Europe, a continent where kings and queens still exist. So that sounded like a fitting theme to cook up for today's imperialism challenges. Exclusive to Europe, we will have to play at a neutral site and we will have to spin a king's decree wheel. We will spin this wheel before each game and essentially we have to obey what the king says. There are more than 12 decrees in the wheel that will add a fun twist in gameplay throughout this conquest for Europe. Just like last episode the victor of this continent will get to steal a player for how many wins they have and ultimately bring in two 99 overall campus legends when they compete for world domination remember it's voted by you in the comment section down below and while you're down there why not hit that like and subscribe button this is how europe was randomly broken apart for the mountain west and pack two let's determine who makes the first move in the battle for europe it looks like it's gonna be the air force falcons air force is gonna have to head to the right therefore we're kicking off europe with a bang air force versus is Utah State. Air Force practically in and around Turkey, whereas Utah State is in that Georgia, Southern Russia, partly Ukraine area. But wait, how could we forget the King's Decree Wheel? Both teams are going to have to endure this game with the worst quarterback in their death chart. So for Air Force, they're losing out on a 93 speed quarterback, and we're going to have to put in Britain. And with 68 overall freshman quarterback for Utah State, I think this is going to be a much more noticeable difference for this team. Taking a look at Hillstead, the Utah State third string quarterback, he's not doing as well as the Air Force guy and almost throws another pick there. The reason why I think Air Force is still managing to do well is because of this option run first football. Down by 16, they're just going with a handoff draw on third and six. Air Force all over that. The defense swarming. Fourth quarter football, honestly, it's kind of stalling out, but this is what the King wanted. He asked for the worst quarterback to start this game and play. With just three minutes to go, let's hope for some action. It taken off, but going nowhere. Sacked for a loss. And Ramsey, who just dropped this quarterback on that last one, has three sacks on the day. The Utah State quarterback has attempted 60 passes today and he's not going to get the 61st pass off as he's dropped. My man has about a 33 passing percentage and he's going to complete here but it's going to be far too short. Air Force dwindles the remaining time left and that's a big dub for the Falcons who actually had a decent game from Ben Britton. They're going to move on to the next step and Utah State has met their end. So with Utah State falling off the map, Air Force continuing their expansion here in Europe. A lot of wild and wacky challenges and a lot of fun. So strap in. Next team on the block, it's going to be the Hawaii Warriors. These guys got to go down south. Funny enough, Hawaii is on an island, but it's not Hawaii. It's the United Kingdom and that's their starting place for imperialism and they're headed south to play the Rams. But hold up now, what's the key? got to say about today's game it looks like he wants Hawaii to play in heavy precipitation so I hope the Rams and the Warriors are ready and so by decree of the king it's heavy rain outside so that's a perfect time to gather the teams together and let's play football for a team with 67 overall according to college football revamped they're doing awfully well here against the Rams the Rainbow Warriors are up big and you know what I might have misspoke I think Braden's stat line just popped up five interceptions it's definitely the defense for Hawaii we got to credit as they are just force another fumble. It's the rainy conditions, I'm telling you. Second and 15, Rams quarterback dropping back. He's going towards the end zone. He's got a man, but he's going to be short. Shout out Torrey Horton. He made an appearance in one of my last DM videos I made where college football players built the team. Fourth and five, literally down by 27 points, 24 points. Well, now it's like, what, 18? But still, it's, man... It's a long way to come back. I know Hawaii's tropical and all, but did they really get this much rain to know how to play football really well in the rain? Chewing some of that precious clock, dropping back to pass on third and eight. He gets decked. The 13th attempt in the red zone today for the Warriors. And they are still slinging the rock. Who cares about any mercy rules here? Nothing. No friendliness. Braden set up with a lot of good opportunities from his defense. He's thrown for 380 yards and four touchdown passes. Can he cash in for his fifth TD pass? Not quite. Rams playing for pride, fourth down, dropping it off to Torrey Horton. He's got some space and he'll get the first down. Hurry up offense, dropping back. He just steps up to scramble, gets a little bit of a block there, sheds through, 
What a run by the QB. Just under two minutes, they're gonna hand it off, try to cash in, it's not gonna work. Wasting so much time in the process. These guys gotta score three times and there's only a minute and 30 left. He can't even get in there. Maybe the fourth time is a charm. It's a read option, QB will do it himself. All in vain, however, as Hawaii ices out the game, winning by 10. Braden Shager had a game. Hawaii's moving on. No longer confined just to the United Kingdom island. They're gonna be taking over some France and Italy territory too. Let's see who's up next. It looks like Air Force gets the nod again. Already expanded territory one time. They're gonna have to try again up north. To me, that means Washington State is the most likely opponent here as the Pac-2 team is gonna have to face the Falcons. Before we jump into the game, let's find out what the King wants to happen. The fastest players must start and move to the top of the depth chart. Speed is the name of the game in this one, even at the cost of overall points. As you can see, Air Force receivers are actually led by now two of their lowest overalls. Doesn't hurt to have a 93 speed quarterback at the top. For Washington State, however, this is a shakeup as Emmett Brown is now the starting quarterback. And man, these Cougar receivers have some speed with 90 in the top three. With a need for speed, this is a low scoring affair. Air Force just gets stopped there behind the line. Instead, wow, they settle for a big field goal. Does he have the leg off the post? Man, how unfortunate. A missed field goal costed them the opportunity to take the lead, but on third and 16, just gonna dump off a slip screen, really going nowhere. Cougars defense is there. Because of the speed decree, Washington State forced to go to the third string quarterback. It's not really working too well. Big third down here. Can the Cougars get some cushion? It looks like they're just gonna hand it off and punt, and the Falcons will now get a crack at it. I can see why this has been a low scoring affair as no one is convincingly stepping up for a big play and hey Kate Harris nice catch they gave the Falcons a first down and they're gonna look to choose some clock and get themselves into a good field goal range lining up in a option like formation dropping back to pass however something the Falcons don't do too often but it worked there key third down here they're only three for 14 on third down conversions throughout the game tight end in motion number eight looking for something you just can't take a sack no way so instead of a field goal attempt it's a fourth down the cougar defense stepped up big and they step up again it's their ball with a minute to go emmett brown in the cougars just handing it off looking to take the clock all the way down and kick a field goal and instead the imperialism or the ai or whatever it was forces the clock to go out cougars just choked the golden opportunity man oh man talk about poor clock management here washington state starts with the ball in overtime air force falcons defense steps up third and 15 here it's up to emmett brown to get it done and oh man this defense defense is absolutely lights out. Forced to take a giant field goal attempt in overtime, it's good. Once again, both teams really came to play defense. Offense, not so much, but what a strike. Unfortunately, fourth down for the Falcons. Yep, and it looks like they're gonna settle for three. It's a chip shot. He's got it. It's going double OT. Third and six, running back in motion. It's a screen out to the receiver. He's got some space. He's going down the sideline. They're almost into the end zone goal line area. Can Zachary put the Falcons on his back? That handoff got a big chunk. If you need a third down conversion, this is the time going for the plunge, and that was a odd route. Brother, are you kidding me? Falcons are literally inches away from scoring the touchdown. Honestly, I'd go for it, but hey, the AI is gonna take their three, it's good. Third and 20, Washington State needs some yards back or anything. This sack is an absolute no-go. You could not have had that. This Ramsey dude on the Air Force defense has three sacks again in this game. He did that in the first one, fourth down. It's a turnover, big catch completion but that's game air force wins against the cougars double overtime and honestly the cougars could have kicked a field goal or something to win it in regulation but hey uh they chose poor clock management air force got it done this is how we're shaping up unfortunate end for the cougars the next team is the other pack two team the oregon state beavers getting tested here beaver nation going down to the right a little bit king's decree they're looking for a second string defense in this one fourth quarter action it's a little odd to me that with second string defense and it wasn't more of an offensive shootout for either team honestly that's what i was expecting with the King's decree to go with second string defense. And let's see on third and eight, if Fresno State can get an opportunity and oh my goodness, second string Beavers all over him. Looks like Fresno State's second string defense is getting the job done today as they're gonna hold Oregon State on their drive to a fourth down. Beavers down by eight. They need this in a big way. Going across his body, good defense. DJ getting a running back in motion, read option. He's got it himself. Converts on the fourth down, touchdown. There are still a couple transfers on this roster, but uh, that's the nature of the transfer portal. 21 apiece, Fresno State 
State looking to respond on the other side of the football. Second string defender, big stop. That stop forces Fresno State to punt this one back. Third and eight in their own end zone, and that screen was going nowhere. Just under three minutes, it's crunch time. Time for a team to step up and make a big play, and that option for the first down is a good start for the Bulldogs. Will the Mountain West continue to represent, or will a Pac-2 team step up? It looks like the Bulldogs with a big run there into field goal position. Cougars went down the last one. The Beavers in jeopardy in this one, and wow, quarterback got annihilated. Mikey Keene's gonna be feeling it, and he's dropping back to pass. He's got a wide open tight end. Touchdown, Bulldog. Game on the line. DJ, do you have something from your back pocket oh my goodness he escapes the first sack but the second one is too much Fresno State forcing Oregon State to burn all their timeouts in that first down conversion is wrap wow this was honestly the last thing I was expecting in imperialism I did not expect pack two teams to get eliminated in both their first games I mean Cougars got a little bit hosed I get that Oregon State got defeated fair and square so the pack two got an invite but they could not capitalize Beavers the final team to go no, Fresno State has control over that side of Russia. Going ahead and giving another spin to the wheel of teams, the UNIV Rebels on their own island up in Iceland. These guys have to go down and to the left a bit, which at that trajectory from Iceland looks like no one, but honestly, the team that's furthest south into the left is Boise State. So this is gonna be a Rebels-Broncos matchup. This matchup, it has to be a longer game, 15 minute quarter, so it's gonna be realistic. Both teams with 350 yards a piece, the King didn't want any funny business for this one, just a longer game because he is all invested in a UNLV Boise State Bronco matchup. UNLV taking their time trying to chew some clock already. That's that's odd. Um, there's still a lot of time left in this one, but they're going to drop back, getting close to the red zone, find a quick man there for three. It's first and goal, back to the option play. He actually flicks it out to the running back on the speed option. It was a triple option to be technical, and he got it. Impressive performance there from UNLV to get down the field. Boise State, on the other hand, that was dangerous. Third and inches on this play. It is crucial they get it, and it's a triple option. I think he got that one yard. Deja vu, another third and inches. This time, it's stuffed. Rebels miss a chip shot field goal, leaving the Broncos in this one with a chance to get a touchdown for the lead. On fourth down, the Broncos going for it because the defense for UNLV has been super strong, but not strong enough on that connection to Billy Bowens. Malachi Nelson, the top quarterback from his class a couple years ago, the redshirt freshman for the Broncos, big run. Under five minutes to go. It's a handoff. It looks like Dubar. Genty, is he hurt? Let's see if the Broncos can finish the drive. Back to Dubar. He's got a touchdown. They're going to have the lead. Rebels go three and out on the following drive, punting it back to Boise. UNLV just down to one timeout. This is a big third down. They get the stop. They choose to use the final timeout, and it's up to this big field goal. Yep, he got it. So now it's a six-point difference. What will Jordan and the Rebels do? Quick slant. They're just short. Fourth and one. Of course, we knew they were going for it the game is on the line after all so he has to convert right here it's a read option and he's got it with a mean stiff arm that last run was personal and he's gonna drop back and find his man and that hit stick was a little personal too all the rebels gotta do in 50 seconds is drive down this field score a touchdown and get the extra point and they win i definitely think there's time and there's definitely a possibility this becomes a reality and just kidding i'll take back my words right there as boise state dagger pick jalen clark sealed it with a massive Massive pick, and that is a W for the Boise State Broncos. Their conquest for Europe continues. So I wasn't really sure how to show the expansion of land here, so I created a clone and put Boise State's logo over Iceland. The battle for Europe is moving right along. We got the Wolf Pack on deck. These guys are gonna have to go up north, and it looks like Nevada's heading up towards the Sweden area to face Wyoming. Let's figure out what the challenge for this game is, and it's gonna be the tallest players have to start the top of the depth chart, no matter the overall. Tallest quarterback, check. Tallest running back, only at six foot, check. Two six four receivers, check. Six foot one, six foot top two corners. That was Nevada, this is Wyoming. I'm telling you right now, both teams got hosed. If you didn't know, size does not mean talent. Size definitely does not translate to talent every single time and uh, Nevada is making better use of their lemons. The big running back here for Nevada has 31 carries, 117 yards. And that might've been just his last carry of the game. Shane and the Wolf Pack did what they had to do today, 31-12. And it's a whole lot of 
ugly on Wyoming's side as they've only mustered up four field goals and nothing going here in the fourth quarter. Under three minutes, Wyoming's content with chewing clock, I guess. At least you get to check out what a big and tall Wyoming team looks like. Evan is a 6'5 quarterback out here for Wyoming, number 17, pretty much Josh Allen size and Josh Allen number. If Wyoming won the continent of Europe and had their chance at campus legends, I think Josh Allen would have been a good bet. Two minutes to go, quick pass there, just no one in the vicinity. My Salona Beach Sponges had a chance to play Savota and the, the Cowboys, and he wasn't impressive either. So Nevada doing what they have to do. Fourth and 12, let's see what Josh Allen Jr. can do. Just eat sacks, okay, pause. Well, the King wanted to see tall guys take the field today, and honestly, nothing too exciting here. Nevada just grinded one out. Wyoming a one and done, unfortunate for the Cowboys, but the Wolf Pack continues to stay hungry. Looks like the San Jose Spartans get their first crack. These guys are gonna have to go down south. Down south is against the New Mexico Lobos. Little Lobos Spartans action, why the heck not? Let's see what they have to do. It's just a normal game. Hold the line, this game is not even fair. 48 to seven in the fourth quarter and just picked off. This could be a pick six. This is out of hand. Are you kidding me? San Jose State pads it on 55-7. Have you ever seen an Imperialism blowout like this? Are you planning on taking the New Mexico Lobos to college football glory when the new game comes out? Is this your first dynasty to rebuild? The heck, they need help. First in goal, but who the heck cares? You're getting absolutely embarrassed by the San Jose State Spartans, and I just have not seen a blown out like this in Imperialism. It looks like we gotta watch out for San Jose State. They might mean business and make a run for Europe. Or on the contrary, they might come back crashing to earth if they play another opponent not named Lobos. Fourth in goal, scholarship on the line he does throw a touchdown surprisingly looking in live here on san jose state this is the second string offense out to play third and 14 honestly not bad getting this far and they're gonna take a deep shot oh my goodness he's wide open Oh my goodness. That, my friends, was Jay Butterfield, the backup quarterback, uncorking one. Now 61-14, Lobos looking to respond. What a game. This is all just for pride and wow, sack. You know you're down horrendous when the backup defensive end has two sacks today. Nothing at all to see in this one. San Jose State obliterated the Lobos and Cordero here, five total touchdowns, a efficiently easy game. Lobos did not even stand a chance. It was never in doubt. It is crazy. Crunch time in imperialism for Europe. Fresno State's back on the clock. Looking to go to the north. Most directly bordering them to the north is San Jose State, so it's gonna be an actual test for the Spartans. Last game, they had a normal game. This game, they're gonna have to go once more with the worst quarterback on their depth chart. Fresno State relying on freshman quarterback Joshua Wood. San Jose State also has a redshirt freshman that's a 72 overall. Both teams relying on freshman quarterback, their third stringers, and the Spartans are up by one. Big play here. Connection number 16, pushing for the end zone, one yard short. Tyler Voss, 230 yards, three touchdowns against the top tier Fresno State defense in the Mountain West. This is an impressive performance from the young gun. Literally just one yard away. I think they should hand the ball off, let their running back cook, but no, they want to pass. What are we doing? Once again, I want to state here, we're just one yard short, San Jose State, and he tucks it and keeps it. He scores. I got to say the King's decree wheel always keeps us on our toes here. It's pretty fun to see third string quarterbacks get a crack for their team. In this case, Joshua Wood and Voss are both freshman quarterbacks looking to make a difference. Fourth and one smack dab at midfield. He slings one across and he's got his man. What a find. Wood is not having the best game on paper, but he can wipe that clean with a big fourth quarter performance. And no time like the present to step up on fourth and six across the middle. It's short. Final second seconds tick off in victory formation the Spartans win their second game this time defeating the Fresno State Bulldogs so it looks like that 61 point performance was not a fluke against the Lobos this team is legit they're hot they are a threat Bulldogs were the aggressor it didn't pay off San Jose State in control of a good chunk of land getting closer and closer to determining who will be champion of Europe. Wolfpack, you're up. Nevada is going to have to go to the right and up a bit. Our map's a little funky, but the team that borders them the most to the right is actually Air Force. Wolfpack, Falcons in this one. It's going to come down to a normal game. Both teams on paper were 75 overall, according to Revamped, and the Wolfpack are proven to be better in this one so far. Not often do you see Air Force getting blown out, but they're down by 18 and about to give up some more points. Second and goal, handoff. Dollars gets his fourth rushing touchdown of the day. Man was on a mission. 
Falcons designed to be an option type team, controlling the clock, controlling the tempo, not good from playing from behind. If you got Air Force in a position to throw almost every down, that means you've done something right on the other side. Fourth and 13, it's a big play pending here, going for it all to the end zone, intercepted. Yeah, absolutely blanketed back there, no chance. With just a minute and 15 seconds to go, another handoff, it's fourth down, but they're down by 25, so the Falcons stand no chance in this one. G to the G. That running back today put on a performance. Sean Dollars over 200 yards. I do want to say the Falcons had a nice little run, but Nevada nonetheless has got pretty much a full strip of Europe from north to south. The only team we haven't seen yet who's been just hiding away is the Aztecs, and they're still going to hide away. Boise State up next. The Broncos need to go to the right and down. In practically every angle from Iceland or down in Spain, it looks like Hawaii, Boise State. As per usual, we'll check in and see what the king wants for this game, and oh man, we haven't landed on this one yet. Out of position quarterback. Talk about a game changer. You better hope to have a stud athlete on your roster. Look at Franklin Jones. Johnson Jr. here. He's our best out of position quarterback for Boise State. 50 overall, 88 speed, 94 excel, and then tack on 80 throw power and 67 throw accuracy. The freshman free safety must have played high school quarterback. Similar situation here. Peter Manuma is the best out of position quarterback. 51 overall, 84 speed, 86 excel, 74 throw power, and 70 accuracy. You're kidding me. I didn't expect to see any points scored in this game. It's 31-10 in the four fourth quarter. Free safety Johnson Jr. needs to get to work if he wants to get the Broncos back in this one. Franklin has 228 passing yards, one touchdown pass, one int, and he's got a dime there and he dropped it last second. Defense was all over it. 10 points is a bit reasonable for a out of position quarterback, but what in the world is Hawaii doing? The Hawaii strong safety at quarterback here. Second down, he delivers a screen to the running back and that's a big play. First down past midfield up by three touchdowns. They're really in the driver's seat as he steps up to just carry it himself. Seven yard scramble. Manuma, the dual threat, strong safety back here, just runs over the defender, but he's short anyway. I must admit, this is actually a lot more entertaining than I thought it was going to be putting in out of position quarterbacks. Manuma and the Hawaii Rainbow Warriors are on a mission this drive, driving all the way down the field, second and goal. Third and goal, just a read option play. Hawaii's on the board again town by four touchdowns really just playing for pride he slings one out what a ball you can definitely tell franklin's got a little bit of zip on his passes as he's gonna throw a touchdown pass with three minutes to go it really doesn't matter because manuma's back in the red zone looking to score again for hawaii if i had to guess which quarterback was better in high school my money's on manuma based on this game alone what a game from the warriors manuma the strong safety has come in and upset boise state I can't believe out of position quarterbacks had this much firepower in the tank. 38 points. And why don't you go ahead and give him player of the game, Peter Manuma? I didn't even know he was like that. 478 yards. Are you kidding me? Jot this down as a mental note. Have you ever seen a strong safety have a better performance at quarterback? Franklin Johnson, the free safety from Boise State, honestly a respectable 296 and two. I'm not gonna lie, that popped off. Hawaii with an out of position quarterback went insano mode. That's just how the cookie crumbled for Boise State. And now the Aztecs finally get their first chance. Aztecs going to be competing to the left and up. That direction of the arrow puts them up against San Jose State. Let's find out what the King wants to see. He wants to see the slowest players start. Aztecs roster equipped with the slowest guys and 48 speed for the quarterback. Yikes. At 65 speed, we'll see Jay Butterfield again. To me, it looked like Jay Butterfield and the Spartans were a strong contender, I guess, until they met the Aztecs. Because the Aztecs in their 48 speed quarterback are actually putting in work despite that sack. And with just under six minutes to go, they're getting down to the red zone again and about to strike. We see this all the time in Imperial as the 48 speed quarterback takes off for a touchdown the read option worked the slow speed no problemo and if you couldn't tell from those couple of plays jay butterfield has not looked too buttery out there today and yeah this is deja vu i'm sure fourth and five i didn't replay the same play the game's over with no time left and they're just giving up aztecs cruise to victory it wasn't much of an issue here even with a slow player only depth chart type play both teams had to put their slowest guys in
Aztecs really lucked out in this one as they came alive at the right time, capitalizing when the moment mattered most. I'm gonna keep it 100%. I didn't expect Hawaii, Nevada, and San Diego State to be the final three teams. Only fitting the Aztecs are getting challenged back to back. The team that owns the land down south is Nevada. So with an Aztecs, Nevada Wolfpack matchup looming, we're gonna have to play under heavy precipitation. Just kidding, it's a longer game. I thought we were gonna hit the other one. By King's decree, he declared this game should be longer 15 minute quarters so the Aztecs or the Wolfpack have to prove themselves fourth down he's got it in completion oh no drop the bag Wolfpack up by 13 just about to score again as he bounces off the tackles into the red zone credit that man Sean Dollars another 190 yards on the ground second and goal looking to top off here read option it's six Aztecs have nothing mustered up on defense give the ball back to the Wolfpack who are already down here again Sean Dollars is a workhorse 47 carries already 211 yards the Aztecs just became the three and out kings this whole last quarter as Sean Dollars with that carry's 53rd carry of the game puts an end to this one. Unfortunately for Aztecs fans, they were put out of the contention for Europe. Nevada keeps it moving. Wolfpack have been fighting for their land and fight some more they will as they just knock out the Aztecs and it's the final two. Wolfpack, Hawaii, Rainbow Warriors, we can go straight to the King's Decree Wheel and figure out what the challenge will be today. And we get the one thing I don't think we've landed on yet, the swap. The top two receivers will play cornerback. The top two cornerbacks will play receiver. Talk about a final challenge with everything on the line. This decree is low-key like the Travis Hunter rule. You got to put your receivers at corner, corners at receiver. Top two receivers by overall is Pinocchio and McBride. Top two corners, Cam Stone and Verdell Edwards. We're swapping those guys around. 41 overall in 40 overall corners. Honestly, not too shabby on receiving here. Cam Stone's a 63 overall. Verdell is 59. For the Wolfpack, it's Campbell and Bell that we're going to put at corner and Isaiah and KK to receiver 52 overall and 48 overall corners and 57 54 overall receivers everything on the line for the whole continent of Europe it has been fireworks out here mainly on Hawaii's side but with these backup corners in and receivers it's been insane and with those changes really the battle for the trenches is what remains the same as that's a touchdown pass was that one of the corners that last touchdown was by KK a cornerback out of position play receiver that was insane as Hawaii's right down the field again it seems like quarterback Braden here is having no problem with his corners at receiver I expected stuff like that drops with how action-packed this game has been and with high stakes it could swing in the blink of an eye now can it swing 27 points worth that still be determined but Sean Dollar is doing his part six minutes to go Wolfpack trying to move quick and that's a touchdown third and massive for Hawaii here Nevada's defense is stepping up don't count them out quite yet as with three minutes minutes left they're back into the end zone tight end could not hold on fourth and eight this is a big play pending and he gets decked Hawaii's defense stands. I want to hear and see what your favorite 99 overall campus legends from Hawaii should I bring into the team because they are making a run for global domination. It's actually insane to me. When I started the Mountain West Pack 2 imperialism, I didn't think Hawaii was going to take it all. Did you? Nevada seriously came alive in the end of this one and with no time left, they throw another touchdown to KK. The cornerback scores again, but Hawaii has a date with the globe as they're going to look to take everything in the playoffs. And it is official. Nevada is no more. Hawaii has claimed Europe, and they will represent this continent in the global conquest for domination. That means for as many wins as Hawaii had this run, we get to steal that many players from the Mountain West and Pac-2 times two because of the group of five multiplier. In addition, voted by you, you get to tell me what 99 overall campus legends should we create to add to the roster. And now I'm gonna show you a look at the global map to date. Spoiler alert for those that haven't seen the Antarctica imperialism, pause or get out of the video now, go check out Antarctica, because I'm gonna show you the updated map. Soak in this map, because so far we have two victors, Old Miss and Hawaii. If you're enjoying the series, let me know, hit that like and subscribe button, and I'll catch y'all in the next.